So have we saved the best till last? Well, I have to say that uh, the senior X30 drivers are going to have to go some to, uh, you know, to, to, to top that last race, I have to say. We've got a 32-cart grid all rearing to go. Um, of course, here the Mansell Raceway. Now, Nigel Mansell owns this track. Obviously, the Dunkerswell Kart Club, now the Mansell Kart Racing Club. But uh, Dunkerswell has been a fixture on this uh, karting scene for, well, over 50 years. 1967, uh, we started racing here. Well, I didn't. I was, I was a, a wee. I wasn't even a thought back in 1967. But... Uh, over the years, and it goes over the years, it's been a, a really big, uh, passionate local club here. But it's not a track that a lot, you know, a lot of drivers here race at regularly. So the, these, these British Championship contenders, I've heard a lot of people saying they've only been here once before, or they've only been here two, two or three times before. Some of them, it's their first ever time here. But their experience counts for a lot in karting, and no more, nobody has more experience than that man there. The driver's going to start from pole position. 2017 World Karting Champion, defending British Champion Danny Curl for the Jade Racing Team on their Viral ART chassis. He starts first. Starting third will be Clayton Ravenscroft uh, for the KR Sport Team, driver number 17, Clayton Ravenscroft. Starting fifth will be his teammate, Sean Butcher. You can see the, uh, the white stars and the background of the Australian flag on his cart. So he starts on the third of the grid. On the fourth of the grid, number 42, the Mad Croc, Croc Promotions entry of Caden McQueen. And then we saw a good result for the Mad Croc team in the Mini X30 race, a fourth and a fifth. There is Thomas Fleming for the Dan Holland racing team. Thomas has had a good round so far. Just looking down at the championship, he is... Sixth in the points down at the moment is Thomas Fleming. Sam Hawthorne for Argenti Motorsport. Sam is uh, having a good run here, and he's got the Black Lives Matter thing on his uh, on his side pods. Good to see that as well. Casper Scusa, owner of the cutest puppy dog in the paddock, the five-month-old beagle called Toby, who will be... Uh, well, he's probably having a nap now, I'd imagine. Casper, that's his best start of the season on the inside of row number seven. Gary Edwards, good to see Gary up at the sharp end. The Mark Litchfield Racing number 87 from Ireland on the comp cart chassis. So, so Gary having some struggles to get into the finals at Raura, but he's uh, moved up the order there. There's Matt Armstrong uh, in the number nine cart for the MLC Motorsport team. He has uh, had, a, he had an incident earlier on, and uh, he's, so, that's, so he's been recovering from that all day. Ben Hodge uh, for the Mark Litchfield Racing Team will be next. There's a look at Ben with that uh, great Iridiva. Oh, you can see James, our can man, in his, in, his, in his visor. So uh, James does get on the live stream even though he's behind the camera. Uh, behind uh, Ben, that is the uh, number 65 Dan Holland cart of Caleb Marshall. And great shots here, just how intricate these crash helmet designs are. Um, a lot of effort goes into their design. Sadly, I don't want to say this to the drivers, but they all look a bit similar when they're flashing around there. They've got to be distinctive guys and girls. There's Ewan Wilson for the S8 racing team. Uh, he starts from the inside of row 12. Thomas Wood for the ST racing team. Lots, see lots of blues, lots of whites, lots of oranges, lots of, like, you know, chrome or what have you. All very nice to look at. Very, very good to look at. I'm not dissing them, but when they're on the commentary, you need that something to really stand out. Like a pink crash helmet, for example. That's Eduardo Cossateng from the Philippines. Welcome back to the British Championship, Eduardo. Uh, he's raced in uh, the IAMI X30 Euro Series and various other events in the UK as well. Oscar Hull uh, for the Argenti Motorsport team on that Kart Republic chassis. Uh, cart number 58 now there's keen shields the flying scotsman keen shields well keen he's gonna have to do some flying you know figuratively not literally please from the back of the pack there is mechanic alex gill just uh, giving his cart the once over he retired to keen shields from his second heat which is why he's down at the back of the pack now james will leg it up to uh, the in outside row of the grid where we should find starting from p2 the number five driver rory hudson uh, Rory the racer, he starts the number five Dan Holland racing cart. There is the British Open champion, last year's British ch championship runner-up, cart number two, Thomas Turner for the Mark Litchfield racing team, Harry Platten. Well, we saw Harry pull off some stunning moves at Kim Bolton to finish on the podium. Gus Lawrence from 
uh, the PF International team. He starts the number four cart from the outside of row four. His teammate, Bradley Pennell, will be just behind him at a uh, very imposing orange, black, and white livery of the of Paul Fletcher's team. Uh, Alessandro Saranetti. Well, there's a cash number that stands out. Plain white. There we are. Save, save a bit of money. Put it, put it into your budget to go faster on the track. Uh, Tyler Reed, cart number 37 for Argenti Motorsport, will be next up. And then we've got from the People's Republic of Thailand and Weir, it's Joseph Taylor in gold and uh, white starred crash helmet. Uh, Jamie Rogers from cart number 69. He is one of the best placed rookies in the championship. He starts uh, from the inside, the outside of row eight. Dan McEwen for the Jade Racing Team on row 10. And then it's Tom Nippers, Newport's own Tom Nippers with the Welsh cutters on his crash helmet on the outside of row 11. Archie Tillett, the third member of the PF International team. Quiet round for Archie so far. He goes off 24th in the grid. Chris Bingham, from the S8 racing team. Very distinctive carts here, the Fullerton chassis. And uh, Matthew Rees, the premium karting entry. Morgan Porter, good to see Morgan back there. He's had a bit of a rough day, a bit of an injured driver as well. And Oliver Greetham rounding out the grid order. And uh, yeah, there's a check. Oh, we can just check to see that Oliver Greetham's uh, race suit is also still in <laughs> in uh, homologation. So he, it's, that race is valid till 2025 because it says so on the back there. So lights, uh, sorry, the signal is given. The green flag waves on the dummy grid. Engines are fired. Oh, Dan McEwen's cart hasn't got going. The number 75 cart. So. And a uh, couple of people looking at that, and you can see a comp cart mechanic there, and Morgan Porter also going out. Now, it's again, it's one mechanic on the grid for each of these drivers. Oh, now, there doesn't seem to be a, a, a massive, massive flurry of activity to get that cart going. Um, maybe just having a think about it. Ah, now, there's somebody's gone over to get their starter motor, so they go into uh, their first of two rolling laps. And here is a full rundown of the starting lineup. Danny Curl and Rory Hudson on row one, Clayton Ravenscroft and Thomas Turner on row two, Sean Butcher and Harry Platten on row three. Kevin McQueen and Gus Lawrence are going to take row four from Thomas Fleming and Brad Pennell on row number five. Samuel Hawthorne and Alessandro Serenetti on row number six. Row seven, Casper Scusa and Tyler Reed. Row eight, Gary Edwards and Joseph Taylor. Uh, row nine, Matt Armstrong and Jamie Rogers. Row number ten, Ben Hodge. Then it's Dan McEwen and Caleb Marshall and Tom Nippers on row eleven. Row twelve, Ewan Wilson and Archie Tillett. Dan McEwen's cart has got going and he has joined the field. So we're going to have a full complement of the drivers. Thomas Wood and Chris Bingham on row 13. Eduardo Cossateng and Matthew Reese row 14. Oscar Hull and Morgan Porter row 15. And Kean Shields and Oliver Greetham starting shotgun on the field in row number 16. Well, while you were down there getting a, a, having a chat with, uh, you know, Zach Knight, who spoke very, very well there, and he was, you know, very good words there from Zach. Um, I did say that, that right, have we saved the best till last? But be honest, I mean, the, the, the senior next year, guys, they're going to have to put on one of the best races we've ever seen to beat that last cadet race. They are indeed, but the senior x do sometimes never disappoint, and hopefully they don't disappoint this time. Revs raise, the smoke comes out, and it's a false start. Oh, look at that. We were, all, we were getting all, we had good our loins, and it was ready to gone to battle, and uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> After you built, you built them up, and they let you down, Anthony. They let you down. I get let down a lot. Oh, oh. You. <laughs> <laughs> enough of your personal life. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go. And, oh, good to see Alan Dev uh, watching there. And again, uh, nice to see a bit of support there for my crash helmet stance. I, I love looking at them close up, but uh, you know when you're they're blurring by, um, it, they all tend to just blend into one another. Yeah, they all tend to look the same, <laughs> don't they? Uh, you know, gone are the days when you used to look at the BBC Fallen Grid and you had all the different really distinctive crash helmets that, you know, PK, Prost, Zenner, Mansell, Boots, and, oh, there's a couple of names, Berger, Johansson, oh, dear, yeah, yeah. Got it all, all retro there. Right, come on. Ryan Shields is giving uh, Keen, family member Keen Shields, a bit of a, the hurry up from the back of the road. There goes Keen in cart number 71. Alex Gill gave him a good kick as he went off. <laughs> to sort of boost him into action. So, for the second time of asking, Danny Curl and Rory Hudson come out to the dogleg. This looks good. Lights are out. We're off and racing. 
Curl's got the inside line, Hudson on the outside. Oh, Hudson's going to get absolutely swamped. Are they all going to get round cleanly? Just about, yes. It's going to be very tight, though, in the midfield pack coming into the uh, second corner. Clayton Ravenscroft up on the curves on the inside line there. They try and hold on there, but Danny Curl has made the perfect getaway. And it's Caden McQueen and Sean Butcher. No, what's the matter with Curl? Curl's made a mistake coming out of turn number uh, the complex. He made a perfect start, and then it all went peak tongue going to the complex. There's Gary Edwards out of the race. Who leads? I think it's Sean Butcher, you know. I think you could be right as we go through. It is the 57 plate of Sean Butcher leading the way, but under some close pressure from the 42 of Caden McQueen as they enter the final corner to finish lap one here for the Senior X30 final. It's race 16, the final race of the day here at Mansell Raceway. And it is, as you say, Sean Butcher leading from Caden McQueen. Then it's Clayton Ravencroft. Then it's Danny Curl in the number one, Rory Hudson, Harry Platten, Gus Lawrence, Thomas Fleming. Then it's Matt Armstrong and then Thomas Turner rounding out the top 10 of the field. But uh, yeah, what happened to Curl at the end of that lap? Well, I, 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 it was half a round the opening lap. So maybe going into turn uh, the, the complex there, you know, a bit of a chain reaction. It's, well, Harry Platten, I noticed, he picked up a place, uh, he picked past Gus Lawrence going into the complex there. So he's in the fifth place. Well, I mean, the stage is now set for an absolute barnstormer. Yes, it was indeed. Because Caden, Caden McQueen is sitting right there on the rear bumper of Sean Butcher. So Butcher, he hasn't won a final this year. Uh, Callum Bradshaw won the opening round, but he then got signed for the Tony Cart factory team. Uh, Danny Curl won the second round, and he won the third round. So uh, Butcher has, you know, he's second in the point standings. He's got a 43-point deficit to start making up. This is a good place to start. He's got to get a win to start with. If he's going to think about being a champion, he's got to get a win. But Caden McQueen is also thinking the same thing. The croc moves into P1 and the 2KR Sports Cosmics now second and third. Curl recovering and stalking them in fourth place through the corridor into hangar on lap number three. Still very close then with these top four. In fact, top five and six. It's just a long train of cuts as they all go through the final corner again. We're going to be finishing lap number three, starting lap four. Twelve and a half minutes left on the clock. And down the inside goes the 17 oh, of the two, Ravencroft. The two teammates, Ravenscroft, made the move and he forced them both. Away. Danny Curl, oh, it, it was it's like going to Poundland, two for the price of one there. Yeah. And now he's got Caden McQueen in front of him. So Curl, he picks up two places without even having to break sweat. And he's got Caden McQueen in his sights already. Ravenscroft is third, Platten is fourth. And uh, Butcher, I think, has dropped all the way back to fifth position with Hudson, who made a poor start from the outside of the front row, down in sixth place. Yep, indeed. So, well, like I say, great recovery from Danny Curl at the moment. Uh, the two car sports chassis have made it a little bit easy for him uh, yep. with that lunge. Oh, smacking that curve on the exit of the final corner again. That's oh. going to be sore down the inside, though. Danny Curl retakes the lead through turn at number one, and that is the way to do it, but still going defensive through this complex section of the complex yep. as uh, yeah 11 and a half minutes left on the clock big look over the shoulder then for Danny Curl but yeah great recovery so far and uh, Clayton Ravenscroft uh, dives in on McQueen for second place McQueen now settles back to third Platten in fourth position Curl four cart lengths in front already Rory Hudson picks up a place coming out of turn number five there as well so cart number five back into P5 at the expense of Sean Butcher the top four are clear then it's Hudson and Hudson needs a whole train including Butcher, uh, Lawrence, Fleming, Turner, Armstrong, Scusa, Joseph Taylor up to 11th. Uh, then it's uh, Pennell, Hawthorne, and there is Fleming making a move on Gus Lawrence. So Thomas Fleming. So we've now got uh, two Dan Holland racing carts chasing down the top four. But uh, Danny Curl is at the moment now leaving them in his wake. Indeed, he is fastest lap of the race then for Danny Curl, a 46.95 as they go through the fast infield section as they exit now through turns six and seven through the corridor. They come in towards Hangar Bend, round this right-hand hairpin, back onto the back straight to start getting tucked in behind those slipstreams as we watch Curl go through the chicane. No pressure at the moment for Curl as they exit now onto the start-finish straight. Ten minutes left on the timer. Yep, and uh, Curl's lead, four tenths of a second over Ravenscroft. There is a move back in the pack. That looks like one of the PF International machines. Uh, possibly Bradley Pennell picking up a place on Tyler Reed. 
as they went into turn number one, the 13th position. Uh, Rory Hudson, driver number five, new fastest lap, 46.940. Yep, nice, good time there for Dan Holden Racing. And uh, as they go through under the 10 minute timer, now to go. As they all again just slotting in that single file. There's the number 14, third place, Harry Platten, looking very comfortable there for BMR. Oh, and I've got to say, there's a couple of carts parked at the side of the track. Uh, we saw Ben Hodge and Gary Edwards go out earlier. I think Sean Butcher has yeah. retired the number 57 car. That is absolute devastation for uh, the driver who was second in the championship. And one by one, Danny Curl's title rivals are caught. There's a move from Matt Armstrong. He passes Gus Lawrence. Casper Scusa, his MLC Motorsport teammate, also trying to pass Lawrence. But... Uh, Again, okay, well, uh, Clayton Ravenscroft, he missed the first two rounds of the season. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's not a championship factor. But again, all Danny Curl's rivals uh, sort of falling over themselves. And uh, the pathway is clear for Curl as long as he can just sort of keep it steady now. But this round and then the final two rounds of PFI, we're not going to give the, the championship yet far from it. But who is going to put together the consistency to match him? No, exactly that. It's been a roller coaster, really, in terms of racing. It always seems to happen where it drops back a few places, comes back, and then always seems to take home the points. There's Danny Curl, but then, like we're seeing here, eight and a half minutes to go, he's still under pressure. Ravens crossed on the 17 for KR Sport. He's not given up at all. No, he hasn't. He uh, only knows one mode, and that is attack. Yes. Attack, attack, attack. And he's closing in on Danny Curl. And, of course, so... You know, Curl will not want to give him a victory, but Ravenscroft isn't going for the title. He's missed two rounds. He's just here, like like Connor Zillish in a way, uh, for the Chaos team. He is just here, win races. Uh, you know, come to the circuit, want to win a race. Not thinking about the points this year. And uh, Ravenscroft now comes through uh, dogleg. Even Curl up on the curb there. That is uh, not what we've seen too much from Danny Curl, but Harry Platten there uh, in the number 14 cart. Well, Platten, seventh in the point standings, but on the podium last time out at Kim Bolton, he is protecting. We're going to see one of the younger drivers in the field make a charge for the championship. Well, first things first, he's got to get past the two drivers in front of him into turn number four. This is lap 10. Still, now at half distance, long way to go. Ravenscroft chasing Curl down. Uh, now, the Queen fourth position is under pressure from Rory Hudson. So Rory Hudson looks like he's the quicker of the two drivers battling for fourth place at the moment. And in fact, the quickest of all is Harry Platten in cart number 14. So Platten is in Ravenscroft slipstream. Ravenscroft just checks over his shoulder. And uh, Danny Curl can't breathe easy just yet. No, and uh, I've just noticed as well, Brad Pennell in 12th place. Five second time penalty for a start line infringement. Also Ewan Wilson receiving the same penalty for the same offence as well. So race control now starting to dish out those five seconds and down the inside, the 17 of Ravencroft. A beautiful move on the inside of Kel there. He wants that win, doesn't he? Oh, he absolutely does. And, uh, and throughout his career, and I've, I've watched Clayton since he, since he started out in karting, you know, he's, he's never one to sort of, you know, if you, if you offer him uh, an open door, he's never one to turn down the opportunity to barge straight, well, not barge, but to walk straight through it. And there was a, a great opportunity to manoeuvre there. Curl wasn't defending, so he thought, right, well, I'll just lunge in turn of one, stand on the brakes, and then, you know, let's see if Danny can get back at me. But uh, he has the race lead at the moment. Uh, Harry Platten right there in third place. And in fourth, it is it's the H Hudson has got past McQueen in fourth place. So can Rory Hudson join the party? He's two seconds back. And Curl literally just stalking the race lead. He's on Ravenscroft's rear bumper, you know. Feel like he's slightly toying with him. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's going to sort of like this. This is a test of Clayton Ravenscroft's nerves. You know, come on then, Clayton, make a mistake. Make a mistake. I dare you. I dare you. I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm here. <laughs> and Clayton's just thinking, shut up. I'm just going to But yeah. uh, into the dog leg we go. Pat and watching. Think, oh, and the Clayton bounces over the curb there. Quite a few of them are doing it, aren't they? I can't. I want to have a look at that curb at the end of today. I suspect it's covered in tyre marks. Those drivers have been absolutely clouting it. And. Uh, been, yeah, just going through there, it, might, it might, can't be comfortable for the drivers. No, no, anything but comfortable. No, you know, yeah. no suspension on the car. I mean, okay, the good thing is they've got their rib, they all got rib techs on, and that, that, that is what is saving their rib cages as we speak. In turn number five, we go, the top three, nose to tail. And again, like we're 
is Hudson in fourth, McQueen fifth, Fleming is sixth, Turner seventh, Armstrong is eighth, Lawrence Dance ninth, Casper Scusa, a really good drive from Casper Scusa in cart number 11, up into P10. Reed is 11th, Hawthorne is 12th, Tillett 13th, McEwen is 14th, Serenetti is 15th, Morgan Porter from 30th to 16th, and that's with an injured hand. Yeah, exactly that. So, fantastic effort for that driver. And you know, four and a half minutes left on the clock. We keep an eye on these top three as they're still nose to tail. It's Curl who's going to lose out the most here. You know, he needs the points to keep hold of that. Like he's saying, the 14 of uh, Harry Platt in there, seventh in the points. So any points here or race win will massively benefit to gain those positions for the championship. But with those four minutes left on the timer, these two scrabbling away, or these three scrabbling away, it's still all to play for. Yes, indeed. So since Ravenscroft has got through, you know, Curl hasn't made a move yet. Ravenscroft hasn't been defending, but now, look, Curl dives to the inside going to pit bend. Ravenscroft, he doesn't let him go, but he's going to go for the crossover move. And now it's wheel to wheel. Oh, Curl, just, they just give each other enough racing room. Just inches apart there. Great stuff. Platten's going to get a good run at mini straight here. But uh, Ravenscroft, now this is where Ravenscroft made his move earlier on. And it's where he makes his move again. So that is uh, obviously a favoured uh, place for Clayton Ravenscroft. Three and a half minutes ago. Harry Platten's thinking now in the last race, the driver in third position going into the last lap came out of winning the race. That would be quite nice if it happened again. It would, wouldn't it? I think uh, if it happened twice in two races, that'd be uh, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, yes. be, uh, for that driver? Three minutes left on the clock then, and like I say, Curl, I think under the most pressure here, I'd say, because like you say, Ravenscroft, he's missed the first two rounds. He's just yeah. after that win. He doesn't matter yeah. if, you know, he drops down. I mean, yeah, it would be nice for a race win, but he's not focused on the points. Curl needs the points to keep that lead in the yep. championship. And, yep. you know, he's because he's going so nose to tail now Ooh, and under yeah. pressure here from Platten as well. It tries to go down the inside of turn four, gets denied as Curl closes the door in the entry, stays behind as they go through turn five. So can't quite do anything here. That number five, though, of Rory Hudson is gaining ever so closer. Yeah, and, and there you go. So Curl didn't defend from Clayton Ravenscroft, but he does defend from the driver that he is competing against in the points. So he's obviously aware that, look, I, I can lose points to Clayton, it doesn't matter, but I want to keep uh, Platten behind me. Uh, and Rory Hudson is closing in, and we saw Caleb Mar uh, sorry, Thomas Fleming uh, in the number 73 uh, Dan Holland racing cart moving to fifth place in the last lap. Thomas Turner moving into sixth. Caden McQueen slipping back to seventh place. Rory Hudson, two minutes to go. Well, if, if Curl does get to, to, to Ravenscroft and start defending, that's going to slow the top three down, and it's going to bring Rory Hudson to play. Hudson's having, after a poor start, and Rory will be absolutely kicking himself from that start. He just stayed out really, really wide, lost a couple of places, but then couldn't get back in. He was caught wide, and he lost seven or eight places from the start. He's fought back well, however, into P4. There's the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place battle. With the number nine of Matt Armstrong in eighth place, and looking good with... Lawrence Knight and Casper Scusa rounding out the top 10. On to lap number 18 we go, 90 seconds remain. Yep, we're at the end of this race now, only a couple of laps to go. It's still Ravencroft leading from Curl, Platten, Hudson, Fleming, Turner, McQueen, Armstrong, Lawrence. Then it's Casper Scusa rounding out the top 10. Danny Curl, fastest lap of the race in second place. That gap just one tenth of a second between those two as we look here at the 73 and the number two squabbling away. This is fifth and sixth. Thomas Fleming and Thomas Turner. Ooh, and a red on. flag now, has red, come out. Red flag's coming out. Now, why is that? Now, there is some consternation down at the uh, complex. Couldn't quite see what the problem is. There are several drivers over there. Uh, again, I, we, it was off camera, didn't see. So a minute to go. Well, that would be the end of the race. That is, uh, obviously, it's well over 25% race distance. They're slowing them down. Now, I mean, we're going to, we'll get the official word because we were on, I think we were on lap 18 there. I think that, that or we were on lap 17 when the red flag was called. And so let's have a little look down. I can't see uh, who is involved, so I'm not even going to attempt to uh, speculate or anything. There are several, several drivers down there and some barriers have been moved uh, but the race has been red flagged and uh, obviously the ambulance or the, the paramedics and the ambulance are quickly on the scene uh, there were several drivers sort of like 
uh, you know, leading down. So maybe a cart has gone over. There was a driver trapped under a cart, but I we can't see that. Don't know. And a uh, minute to go. We'll wait to see the, where the results uh, then will be brought back to the last fully completed race lap. And uh, all we can say is that now there's a cart being rolled back across the circuit minus several bits of bodywork. I think whatever happened, it happened into the entry yes. of the complex because you can see the barriers have been split in half. Now, they are only empty plastic barriers. They're not, they're not extensive. They're not a heavy tile wall or anything like that. But, like I say, the session has been red flagged. And so here's one driver pushing his cart back to the circuit. Now, there's a, there's a, a lot of medical staff and uh, race officials there uh, standing just behind the barriers. But... Uh, Obviously, the drivers involved are all sort of up and out of their carts. And who's this bringing? Uh, it looks like an Argenti Motorsport cart minus a nose cone uh, on them. But I mean, unofficially, and of course, we'll wait to get confirmation. Who is this coming back? This that, is the 46. That's Morgan Porter coming back to the pits with a. Oh, and look at the front bar on that cart that's been pushed. Drop that, that, that front bar is. Very, very skew if Morgan's Porter, Morgan Porter's cart. So obviously one of the drivers involved was Morgan Porter, and uh, so he is okay. The other driver involved is standing up. I don't know the number, but he is standing up and chatting to the uh, medical team. Uh, I say I'm not going to pretend to try and sort of guess who it may be, but the main thing is that he is up, standing, and uh, chatting away, which means he's okay. And unofficially, that does mean, Anthony, that the results are brought back to the end of the last fully completed lap. Clayton Ravenscroft was in front. So, unofficially, Clayton Ravenscroft is there. The carts now all have to come back through Park Ferme. The drivers pushing their carts back to Park Ferme. And uh, the main thing is that all the drivers involved in that incident were uninjured. So uh, never a nice race. That was the last race of the day. And uh, would Danny Curl have made a move? Would Harry Platten have made a move? Could Rory Hudson have caught all of them? Well, we shall never know. But uh, the main thing is, is that uh, 32 drivers started that race. And even though 32 carts didn't quite finish it in pristine condition, the drivers all did. And that is the only thing that really matters as they bring themselves back underneath the commentary position. And uh, well, now we're going to find a couple more drivers pushing their carts back. Uh, <laughs> well, that's going to be... So we're, we're still running lap 18 on my timing screens. Obviously, the race result will be put back to the end of the last fully completed lap. And, of course, it takes the uh, race director, Nigel Edwards and Ken Potter, to then communicate that to... Ian Rogers at Motorsport Timing, our chief timekeeper, and then he will set the results at the end of the last fully completed lap, and then we will get the... Then, so then he will... Uh, you know, he was like, that's Nick Reed running across the circuit, so maybe Tyler Reed was one of those drivers involved. Now, we're not going to have a restart. There was only one minute left on the race clock. Uh, fantastic day of racing obviously you know not uh, ending quite the way we wanted to just looking at some of the drivers coming back well there's Sean Butcher being pushed back to the paddock he had gone out earlier on and uh, you know was out of the race now there is a PF International cart coming back and I can see that the rear axle on that PF International cart is uh, not looking very clever at all that's the number six of Archie Tillett. So Tillett and Porter were two of the drivers involved. There is uh, Mark Litchfield racing cart being put onto its trolley as well. So one of the Mark Litchfield racing carts. Coming back to the paddock. And again, with... with uh, one of the uh, clerks, that looks like Alan Bryant, bringing that driver back. Uh, now, he did lose a Mark Litchfield racing car earlier on in the race. So, 
the end of the fourth round of the Motorsport UK British Car Championship. Anthony Jordan will be speaking to our unofficial race winner, Clayton Ravenscroft, very shortly. But uh, Anthony will close out the show. All it just leaves me to say is thank you very much for everyone for joining us. Thank you very much for everyone for joining us here at Mansell Raceway in Dunkerswell. Fine facility. It's been a great welcome from the local club. A big thank you to the marshals and the medical team. As you can see there, they are there whenever they're called upon to deal with any incidents and accidents. So a big thank you to the marshals, the most important people in all of racing. A big thank you to our timekeeping team at motorsporttiming.co.uk. Big thank you to our Alpha Live for bringing you the live stream here today. A big thank you to Demon Tweaks for their sponsorship. And a big thank you to all the drivers and all their families. It's been a very strange weekend here in the south of England with various parts of the country going back into a local lockdown. But uh, I have to say that the drivers, their families, uh, and the teams have all been very good at respecting the strict mask policy and uh, in the paddock you know everyone has been having to wear masks ourselves included so we are very grateful for all your support on that nobody likes wearing a mask but hey a mask is inconvenient death from covid slightly more inconvenient let's say so that is uh, good to say and we want to continue this championship even though various parts of the uk including my hometown in barry have now gone into a local lockdown hopefully they'll let me back in but before say goodbye now but Anthony Jordan has got one more interview to give you thank you very much for joining us Anthony take it away well joined in the winners bay we've got quite a few drivers and a quite a bit of action but Clayton a race win it's not the sort of end of the race you were expecting but it's still a win for you well done yeah well it's a bit unfortunate that we had to finish under a red flag I would have liked to cross the line um, and see what would have happened on the last few laps for a battle for the win. But, um, yeah, I guess it's just how it is, and hopefully everyone's okay from the crash. And, uh, yeah, it was just a really fun race to be a part of. Well, with, I'm personally, myself, I'm still unsure who it was, but I have heard that everyone is okay, so that you can take that load off your mind. But, yeah, again, just for that race, you, you've not got this your first points for the championship, of course. You missed the first two. So, you know, this just a race win is just a race win in this one, but it must feel good still. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I was obviously missed Raura, but we came back at Kim Bolton, had a good podium finish. So we were looking forward to pushing on and uh, being able to kind of push our way into a winning position and we came here and the pace is really good from the start and um, yeah it just worked out really well had a really good battle with Danny all the way through and it was just like I say a really fun race it did look like a good fun scrap me and Henry were enjoying it all the way through on that one but uh, yeah must be pleased with that one great uh, great end to the weekend yeah thank you so much spot on excellent stuff well again a dramatic end to the uh, end of the racing here today, the first red flag and the only red flag of the day, but uh, glad to hear that all the drivers are okay out on circuit as well. It's been a fantastic day of racing. We've seen plenty of wins all the way through the paddock as some of the teams emptying out the ra uh, radiators out there. But uh, again, congratulations to all the winners uh, through the weekend today. A huge thanks to Demon Tweaks for, of course, sponsoring the championship uh, all the way through. A uh, huge thanks to Henry in the commentary box as well. He uh, managed to keep me on my toes all the way through as well. But uh, again, a massive thanks to all the drivers and the organisers at Motorsport UK for organising a fantastic championship. But from us here at Mansell Raceway, it's goodbye. OK, ladies and gentlemen, for the final podium presentation here at Mansell Raceway, it's on to Senior X30. Now, those of you watching the stream would have seen that the race was red flagged at the end, but what I have to say is that Archie Tillett, the driver that came out of his cart, was absolutely fine. I've seen him a little bit stiff, a little bit stall, but uninjured. That didn't take away the fact that this was a fantastic race up until then. And finishing as the top rookie, I think this is his best performance of the season so far, in 16th place overall, it's Jamie Rogers. So, a great top 60 finish there for Jamie. Now on to the top three. One of the young guns in the class really coming on strong again. He was right there at the end, 
finishing in third position, it's Harry Platten. Finishing in second place, again, he leads the championship. It wasn't meant to be this time, it was very close at the end. We'll never know if he was able to make a move in the last minute of the race. Finishing in P2, it's number one, Danny Curl. Nice of you to wear your overalls, Danny. Thank you very much. <laughs> but your race winner on his return, he made his return to the British Championship at Kim Bolton. He now makes his return to the top step of the victory podium. We're very pleased to have him back. It's Clayton Ravenscroft. Well, Clayton, well, welcome back to the British Championship to start with. I know you were there at Kim Bolton, you got on the podium, but I mean, that was a really, really close race. Obviously, you know, we're not, never going to know what would happen in the last minute, but you and Danny and had a great battle under constant pressure from this man here. Just tell us, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was a constant battle all the way through, really. Really tough all the way through. Um, chopping and changing positions all the time. But um, yeah, it was really enjoyable and happy to be able to be fighting for the win again. Yeah, now, because obviously you missed the opening two rounds of the season. So every race that you turn up, it's just looking, you know, these guys are looking at championship points. You guys, you're just looking for P1, P1, P1. Does that affect the way that you race these guys at all? Well, I guess it's more like you're not settling for like points sort of thing, settling for like a second or third. You're always fighting for that win. And that's just the way I prefer to race really anyway. So <laughs> it's kind of ideal for me. Yeah. Well, it was a great race between you. It was a really strong race. And again, to, to, to the top three of you, another fantastic performance. Well done all, but well done. Congratulations, Clay. Thank you. So there we go. Congratulations. There's your senior X30 podium here at Mansell Raceway. A big thank you to everybody for tuning in on the Alpha live stream. We hope you've enjoyed the action here at Dunk as well. Please join us again for the next round at Fullbeck for the KZ2 and TKM classes. We'll see you there.